I became thoroughly English, thoroughly Christadelphian. And uh, I think back now, what a basis this gave me for my adult life. These children clearly were saved from death. The kinder transport made all the difference in the world between life and death. I was very happy about it because I was part of it. Except I missed my parents. Never saw them again. I was born in Vienna, Austria, uh, in September 22nd, 1931. Maybe I had a rather unusual childhood because my family consisted of my mother, my brother, who was eight years older than me, a grandmother, and two aunts living in the same apartment. I started to sense a peculiar feeling of discomfort and fear, which I was beginning to absorb. The next day, when I went down with my mother to the park, I went to sit on the bench for something, and she gripped my hand so hard, I thought she was going to break it. And then I saw this sign on it, you know, uh, no Juden, and I said, what is this? It happened immediately, night and day. My mom's name was Susie Margot Hertz. She had an older sister, Edith. Her parents were very loving. They were quite religious, and going to the shul in Worms was very, very near and dear to their hearts. I was born on the 24th of June, 1929. Well, we lived by the beach, which was wonderful, and I really enjoyed it until uh, late on in life when the Germans came in. So it wasn't so good anymore. My parents used to send me to the stores where it said, no Juden allowed. So my mother used to gave me a list of what to buy. I was too young to realize how dangerous it would be. And I looked like a German anyway. I had blonde hair at the time. The Holocaust is a state-sponsored systematic murder of the European Jews. And the Germans called it the final solution because once you murder all of the Jews, there is no Jewish problem, there is no Jewish question uh, after that. The pogroms was the burning of more than a thousand synagogues, the looting and the destruction of 7,000 Jewish businesses, the incarceration of 30,000 men aged 16 to 60 and their deportation to concentration camps. It was really mostly my grandfather. He was pretty adamant that nothing was going to happen and really felt strongly that his family would be fine until Kristallnacht. They owned a hardware store right in the city. Afterwards, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, and, and her sister all tried to go outside and rescue whatever they could that was thrown onto the train tracks and bring things back into the store. My grandfather tried to erase and uh, paint the swastikas that were painted on the front of the store. And at that point, they knew they really had to 
to get the children safe. They knew that they had to, to leave as well. At that point, everybody understood that they had to get out. And the only question, which was the burning question, was where to go. The Kinder Transport is the rescue mission that saved children from Germany, Austria, Czechoslovakia, some from Poland and Gdansk in the nine months before World War II. The most well-known Kinder Transport program and the one that rescued the largest number of children were the Kinder Transport to Great Britain. In Britain, members of parliament got up to say, what can we do? We see what's going on in Europe. This is terrible. We're obviously not going to help everyone, but what can we do to help children? The innocent children who are living in these terrible conditions, they can't go to school, their parents are being arrested. What can we do to help the children? And that, which was an expression, a wild expression of violence, which could not be ignored internationally, was what led to the kinder transports. Christadelphians really go back to the 1840s, 1850s, when a man by the name of John Thomas, who was a medical doctor, began to study with the Baptists and later on with other churches. He created Christadelphianism largely because what he felt was that there were some errors that he saw from other teachings, and he felt it was appropriate to create a fellowship that was based on what he believed to be true teachings in the Bible. Christadelphians believed that God created the nation of Israel from Abraham, and that nation that he created was a nation of promise. They were to be God's people. So our connection with Israel is very intrinsic. Throughout the centuries, nations who cursed and did evil things to Israel would themselves suffer terrible fates and would crumble. And this has been consistent throughout history. We also know those that blessed the people of Israel would be blessed. So doing good to the people of Israel is something that just makes sense. The relationship of the Kusadelfin with the Kinder Transport was part and parcel of our uh, focus on uh, on the success of the Jewish nation. And uh, as soon as uh, the Kinder Transport was established, Alan Overton uh, took upon himself to uh, encourage and, and support the placement of uh, the Jewish children in homes of uh, Christadelphians. The world was beginning to be horrified by Hitler, the persecution of the Jews. It was, I think, on Christmas Day that the BBC put out an appeal on behalf of the Jewish children. The British government had said they would open the doors to the Jewish children and some others. Hearing the appeal, Phil looked at me and said, why don't we? My mother tried very hard. Let's say I was seven, so my brother was 15. She wanted him out. She wanted him to go. And she was going day after day, and nothing was happening. The OK was not coming through. So one day, I heard them, I was there, saying, my brother said, why don't we just try Farella? So with that, I was dragged to agency and agency and elevators I could hardly breathe. This time she took me constantly. And uh, somehow she did whatever she had to do. She did it by herself. 
Only one parent was allowed to go with the child to the train station. I think my grandfather already felt at that time that he was not going to see my mom again, and it was just too painful to really say a last and final goodbye. And I think my grandmother was much more hopeful that she would see my mother again, but she knew she was saving, hopefully saving her life. One of the things we have to understand profoundly about kindred transport is the drama within the life of the parents. What would it take for me to give up my children with the knowledge that I may never see them again? For German, Austrian, and Czech Jews, the ultimate act of love was to give the children away, to send them into the arms of strangers, and that was the ultimate act of love. My parents planned to send us away, and they were telling us that uh, we're going to be going to the Whitakers. With most children, they had photographs, and they sent them to Bloomsbury House, the committee there in London, and they sent them to people's homes, like the Christadelphians. They looked at the photographs, and uh, Whitakers probably thought we were cute kids, so they took us in. I left Sapat with my sister on May the 3rd, 1939. My parents took us to this bus with other children, and we got on the bus and said goodbye. And that was the last time we ever saw our parents. The next day we got on the ship and wound up in England. And then I met the Whitakers and I passed out and I was out cold till the next day. I never woke up, I was so tired. I was seven and a half when I came on the Kinder Transport. When I arrived in England, when I arrived to this huge station, and I still didn't know what was going on, but we were all sitting there, a group of us. They could have been 30, 40, 50, I don't know, but that many children. And one by one, these children were called up and they left. And I got extremely anxious and nervous. At that moment, I think a realization came that all this stuff that had been going on with my mother and all the nervousness in the house and the culminated into this. And I didn't know what this was, except that it was extremely uncomfortable. And why was I there? And not back where I should have been. Scenes in this picture are taken from Brunsbury Park, but similar ones are taking place in many parts of the country. The children are part of the Jewish refugee influx, which is providing the world with such a ticklish problem. Not all of them know where their parents are. They write letters, which will in many cases never be delivered. But meanwhile, these arrangements for the kiddies keep them fed and as happy as possible under circumstances which all people of understanding and sympathy must surely deplore. My mom had a wonderful relationship with George and Flory Perry. They were a young couple who were only in their 20s, not people that had tremendous means. They worked very hard. They worked in factories. Flory wanted my mother to learn English as quickly as possible, and she did pick it up very quickly. And she wanted my mom to fit in and dress like the typical English little girl. I think she was just very much involved in not wanting her to feel like an outsider. Lillian and Philip Adams took me to live with them for eight years. They were extremely different from my own family. 
night and day. My family was all touchy-feely, this, you know, in Vienna, a lot of women always say, and this was a reserved English family. But reserved doesn't mean unfeeling. I felt a warmth from Lillian almost immediately. I didn't respond to it immediately because she was a stranger, but I felt it. Imagine, I mean, taking into your own home a child very different from you, a, a child who may not speak English, is very sad and missing their parents. I was crying all the time, day and night, just tears, not sobs, just tears, crying, crying. I was so homesick and abandoned. Pony was clever and also attractive, large liquid dark brown eyes, lovely wavy hair and a fetching smile, good sense of humor. Max was a chatterbox. They both thought a lot of Timothy, Max especially. Harry Whitaker gave me the garden and I controlled it. And then on top of that, they made me clean all the shoes every Saturday morning from the whole household. I guess it was trying to teach me uh, to become a good person. The children who went on the kinder transport were saved systematic persecution, probably being shipped to ghettos where they would either be shot or after a period of time they would be sent to concentration camps. They wanted my mother to maintain um, and have knowledge that she was Jewish and where she came from, but they were very, very interested in her being a big part of their family. Flori wrote to my grandmother in Germany and asked her permission and if it would be okay to take my mom to meetings with them. Christadelphians have a common set of beliefs, which we call first principles. These are things that we see that are taught consistently through scripture. This would be things like, what's the purpose of man on the earth? What are the consequences for sin? What is death about and what is the plan for salvation. The Christadelphians just welcomed me into the community completely. I went under the name of Adams. I was then called Rella Adams. They went to meetings every week and we did constant uh, walks and hikes. I was very involved. And we did, I did sing in the choir, and we did do Christmas carols, <laughs> and I did it all. <laughs> very involved, because they, they were very involved. The opportunity for us to be able to show kindness and to help those who are in need is a basic teaching in the Bible. It's something that we believe is clearly the teaching of Jesus, that we should, uh, not just tell a person uh, to be warmed, but actually to give them our coat. Those who learned from Christianity animus to the Jews and punishment because Jews were allegedly at that point the killers of Christ, felt that in executing the Jews, they were exercising a certain type of retribution. Those who understood that human beings are created in the image of God and that human life is sacred and who acted on those values were the true Christians who brought forth the nobility of their own humanity and their own sense of divine obligation. I always thought of my mom as not being that very typical German. She was much more carefree. She just made people feel so comfortable and made people feel so welcome. Uh, her home was always uh, open to everybody. And I think maybe a big part of that was also the fact that she was taken in by the Perrys. And I think that was a big part of her makeup because she was saved. Her life was saved by the Perrys. And she was given so much that I think she also wanted to give back. I just consider myself so fortunate 
that at such a young age, I was taken into a home that had moral values that were wonderful, that taught me how to be a human being. As it is, I was fortunate to have this upbringing for eight years. Impressionable years, seven to 15. They're very impressionable years. Thank you from the bottom of my heart because I truly believe that I would not have survived this time since no one in my family survived and I was the youngest, I honestly, honestly feel that I would not have come out of this alive. But you made it possible for me to have a life and children and grandchildren. And I'll be eternally grateful for that and so will my children. Come on, 